This is a teaching by Pastor Nico Sammons from ICU God Ministries Online. Pastor Nico has started a new series on the book of Revelation. And now, here is Pastor Nico as he teaches through the book of Revelation. The title of this message is The 144,000 of Israel Sealed. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we declare that you are a good God and we declare that you are a great King. Thank you that we can study your word today. It is my prayer that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts and that he will open our minds so that we will be able to understand what you want to say to us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, in Jesus' wonderful and powerful name we pray. Amen. Two preachers were holding up signs on a portion of roadway, trying to get the attention of passing cars. The first preacher sign read, The end is near. A sports car flew by, and upon reading the sign, the driver slowed down and yelled to the preacher, Tell someone, who cares? About that time, the car passed the second preacher, whose sign read, Turn around before it's too late. Not wanting to miss a chance at another wise crack, the driver yelled out, Religious freak! A few seconds later, as the car disappeared around a corner, the sound of screeching brakes drowning away into the distance before a muffled thud could be heard, followed by utter silence. One preacher told the other, Maybe we should change to one sign that reads, Bridge out ahead. Humanity can be seen in the attitude of the man in the car. We don't want anyone telling us what to do, even God. And not only do we have that rebellious attitude, we tend to show that in the way we talk to others too. It would seem to me that we would be much better off if we would talk less and pay attention more, especially to the Word of God, rather than hear the truth and then simply acknowledge it as truth, we tend to deny the simple truth and make up all kinds of wild stories to take its place. Even if those stories take more faith to believe than it would take to just believe the truth. And we must remember that there is something called consequences. Every decision we make has some kind of consequence attached to it. And, as we will see in the book of Revelation, there are severe consequences for those who deny God and His truth from their lives. Here in chapter 7, we continue our message about how there will come a day when all consequences will be paid for if we continue to deny and ignore God. In chapter 6, we saw where Jesus had been given a scroll from God. That scroll had seven seals on it. As each seal is broken, we see a new round of punishment coming on the people of earth, trying to get them to turn away from Satan and turn towards Jesus Christ. Revelation 7 verse 1 says, and after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. 
Between the sixth and the seventh seal, the sixth and the seventh trumpet, and the sixth and the seventh bow, there is a pause. That may be a little confusing in the sequence of events if you don't understand that God is simply putting a parenthesis between the sixth seal and the seventh seal. A parenthesis is a word or phrase inserted as an explanation or afterthought into a passage which is grammatically complete without it. In writing usually marked off by brackets, dashes or commas. Simply it is an interlude or interval. I call this pause the eye of the storm because after six seals were opened and the terrible judgment, there is a period of some good news in the midst of all this chaos as we meet a special group of people set aside for God's purpose. The reason for the interlude between the six and seven seals is given to us in the first three verses of this chapter. The sixth seal has been opened and the people of the earth have tried to hide from God, saying, who is able to survive? Just when all hope seems lost, four angels hold back the four winds of God's judgment until God's people are sealed as his own. Only then will Jesus open the seventh seal. Who can stand in the tribulation? We can, because we will be in heaven. But there are two other groups who will also stand, one of which is comprised of four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Aha, you say, the Bible can't be taken literally because everyone knows the earth is round. How then can it have four corners? I am amazed that some people struggle with this idea. Although the earth is round, it still has four corners. They are north, east, south and west. Those are the four corners and that is the direction of the four angels. There is one in the north, there is one in the east, the south, and the west. The four winds of the earth refers to the winds of God's judgment. God uses wind in judgment and he controls the wind. Psalm 148 verse 8 says, Fire and hail, snow and vapors, stormy wind fulfilling his word. During the day of his wrath, he will use the forces of nature to judge mankind. Revelation 7 verse 2 says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. The angels sent to judge are suddenly halted in their tracks. God orders them to stop for a while. Revelation 7 verse 3 says, Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Jesus is about to seal the fate of the wicked world, but first he seals his own. The idea of sealing refers to the process whereby a builder would seal with wax the lumber he chose before it was shipped around the Aegean Sea. Arriving at the port nearest him, the builder could carry away whichever trees had his seal upon them. So too, the master carpenter, Jesus Christ, has chosen us to be the material of his eternal temple. 
Therefore, He has sealed us with His Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. In this verse, Jesus reveals His heart. He suspends judgment to show mercy. Recall, a seal was a sign stamped into hot wax. It was a mark of ownership. The seven seals on the scroll spoke of Jesus' ownership of God's creation. Now He is about to seal a group of people. For in this time of tribulation, there will still be folks who embrace Jesus as Lord, and He will seal them with the Holy Spirit. He will put His mark of ownership on the foreheads of His servants. The seal is the exact opposite of the mark of the beast, explained in Revelation 13 verse 16. These two marks place the people in two distinct categories, those owned by God and those owned by Satan. This reveals the Master's heart. In the midst of judgment, He still shows mercy. Revelation 7 verse 4 says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. This verse clearly identifies this group as a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. These men are Jews. If someone tells you they are one of the hundred and forty-four thousand, just ask them which tribe. These are 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel. This group is an exclusive Jewish brotherhood. Realize, according to the Bible, there are three types of people in the world. Jews, Gentiles, and the church. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 32 says, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the Church of God. And only one group will be spared the wrath of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 says of the Church, God did not appoint us to wrath. And in verse 10 we read of the Church speaking of Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. A great escape awaits the Bride of Jesus, all true believers. The Great Tribulation is for unbelieving Jews and Gentiles. It's the final opportunity for both. Apparently, this is the jolt needed to open eyes blind to God's truth. And these 144,000 Jews will believe. God will seal them, equip them, and use them to spread the gospel. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, He told His followers, Go and make disciples of all nations. This reminds the job of believers today to share the gospel. But in the great tribulation, the church is in heaven. God will still use the gospel, for it alone is the power to salvation. But in the church's absence, the delivery system for the gospel changes. He uses other means. In Revelation chapter 14, God sends angels flying through the skies, declaring to humanity the everlasting gospel. Revelation chapter 11 speaks of two witnesses who grab the world's attention by performing miracles. And here in chapter 7, He empowers 144,000 Jewish evangelists. And imagine their effectiveness. 
These are 144,000 Billy Grahams or the Apostle Pauls. They are Jewish converts to Jesus, sealed and filled with the Holy Spirit. In chapter 9, we are told they even have supernatural protection and they preach post-rapture against the backdrop of cataclysmic judgments. This explains why millions of people all around the world will come to faith in Jesus. Did you know that everywhere in the world today, apart from North America and Europe, Christianity and the Church are experiencing unprecedented growth. South Korea, Africa, China, India, Indonesia, even traditional Muslim countries, all across the planet, the Church is growing by thousands of members per day. Yet the largest, most sweeping spiritual awakening is still future. And ironically, it won't occur until the church of God is raptured. In Matthew 24 verse 14, Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all the nations, and then the end will come. Jesus foresaw a final worldwide burst of evangelistic activity prior to his return, and it gets carried out largely by the supernaturally sealed army of 144,000 Jews. Revelation 7 verse 5 to 8 says, Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephtalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabilon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. This is a different list from the usual listing of the 12 tribes in the Old Testament, because it is a symbolic list of God's true followers and worshippers. Judah is mentioned first because Judah is both the tribe of David and of Jesus the Messiah. The tribe of Reuben should come first, for Reuben was the oldest, but because of his very gross immorality, he lost the first place. You will remember the tribe of Levi had no tribal allotment since Moses' day because of the Levites' work for God in the temple. But here the tribe is given a place as a reward for their faithfulness. The tribe of Dan is not mentioned because it was known for its rebellion and idolatry traits that are of course unacceptable for God's followers. The 144,000 are sealed, especially because they are going to witness during this period, and it is going to cost them a great deal. If they were not sealed, they sure wouldn't be able to make it through. God never leaves himself without a witness upon this earth. What are the lessons that we can learn from this Bible study? Number one, the winds of judgment are for now to be held back. Nothing can move until God accomplishes His purpose. 
What is his purpose going to be? I do not think God would permit any period to continue on this earth in which there were not some of the human families turning to him because that is his purpose. I do not think he would continue to keep this world running. I think he would shut it down, turn it off and speak it out of existence if there were not people turning to him. Therefore, this will be a period when multitudes will turn to him. A great company is going to be saved and this reveals that these judgments will accomplish a purpose for God. It will cause multitudes to turn to him in this period, but it will cause another multitude to turn against him. It is just like the effect of the sun shining down on a piece of soft clay. What will the sun do to the clay? It will harden it. What would be the effect of that same sunlight upon wax? It would melt it. The sun has the opposite effect upon clay and wax. The judgments of God are the same. In our lives as believers, when trouble comes to us, I have discovered this in my own life. It will either draw us to God or drive us from Him. We need to be drawn to Him and that is the reason the Lord let some of us have sicknesses. He wants to draw us closer to himself and this is his way of doing it. Number 2 144,000 will be marked by God as his servants during the tribulation. And guess what? In chapter 14 verse 1 we see every single one of them surviving the tribulation to stand with Jesus. Who is the second group who will stand in the tribulation? Many groups claim to be the 144,000. Jehovah Witnesses are one, even though they had to change their stance a bit when they grew to a group over 144,000. Historical Mormonism also claimed to be the 144,000. Ellen G. White and the Seventh-day Adventists claim to be the 144,000. Garner Ted Armstrong and his Worldwide Church of God claim to be the 144,000. Why would such groups want to be the 144,000? Considering that during the tribulation the world will be falling apart around them because in so doing they conveniently write the Jews out of prophecy. As you see, throughout history, Christians and cult members alike have attempted to take Israel out of the eschatological equation. Doctrines such as replacement theology, reconstructionism and kingdom now propound that all of God's promises to Israel were passed on to the church because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. This is anything but a new idea. Following Constantine's conversion in AD 312, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. At this point, Christian teachers, thinkers and theologians said, uh, Oh, we have been teaching the kingdoms of this world are going to fall, but now we have got a Christian in power in the person of Constantine. So Origen, a heavyweight Bible teacher and philosopher of the day said, I think we have been reading the scriptures wrong. All of the promises given to Israel are simply allegories and illustrations. And as a result, the power and potency, the effectiveness and impact of the church decreased steadily. 
Origen left the scene and was followed by Augustine, who was such a gifted supporter of the case for the allegorizing of the Old Testament that even in some of today's King James Bibles, headings of the sections that speaks of blessings upon Israel read blessings to the church, while sections that speak of curses upon Israel read cursing upon Israel. See Micah chapters 6 and 7. Augustine was eventually followed by Martin Luther, and Luther, although a giant of the faith, was extremely wrong on one issue. He hated the Jews. This is why many Protestant pastors supported Hitler well into his regime. God is not through with his people. His promises to them are firmly rooted in the five covenants he made with them, four of which are unconditional. In the Abrahamic covenant, God promised to bless Abraham regardless of what Abraham did or did not do. In the Palestinian covenant, God gave 300,000 square miles of land from the Euphrates River to the Nile to the Jews, even though at the height of their own rule under Solomon, they however only possessed 30,000 square miles. In the Mosaic covenant, otherwise known as the law, God promised to bless Israel if they followed his commandments. See Deuteronomy chapter 28. Of the five covenants, only the Mosaic covenant is conditional. In the Davidic covenant, God promised that an eternal king would come from David's lineage, fulfilled of course in Jesus. In the new covenant, God promised to give Israel a new heart upon which he would write his will. God is not through with the Jews because the promises he made to them were unconditional. They cannot be forfeited. But Israel failed, you say. So do I. But Israel was fickle, you protest. So are you. But Israel faltered, you whisper. So do we. That is why in Romans chapter 9 to 11, God says, Look at Israel. I have not turned my back on them, and I will not turn my back on you. Number three. We are not told what exactly their service is, but the 144,000 are sealed for a specific and unique purpose. However, the general idea of being sealed is not limited to them. Here are a few examples. Jesus was sealed. John 6 verse 27 says that God the Father has set his seal on him. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit as a down payment of our eventual total redemption. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22, Paul wrote, Who have also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The sealing of the Holy Spirit belongs to every believer when they are saved. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is meant to be both a comfort and a challenge to us. We are comforted in that it assures us that we belong to Jesus. We are challenged by it to depart from all evil and identify ourselves with the one to whom we belong. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Number 4. 
listed by tribe, the 144,000 refer to 144,000 Jews who will preach throughout the world during the tribulation. The two tribes representing Joseph, usually called Ephraim and Manasseh, after Joseph's sons, are here called Joseph and Manasseh because of Ephraim's rebellion. But if Manasseh is inserted into this list, which tribe was removed and is missing? The missing tribe is Dan. Why? The rabbis have consistently interpreted the ominous word in Genesis 49 verse 17 to mean that a false messiah or antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. That could indeed be true, but Dan's exclusion may also be the result of something else. You see, God specifically says in Deuteronomy chapter 29 that any tribe involved in idolatry would be separated from the remaining tribes of Israel. This is exactly what happened to Dan. When they came into the promised land, the people of Dan were given coastal territory. But they weren't happy. They soon migrated north in search of new land, finally settling above the Sea of Galilee in close proximity to the pagans. Because of their geographic location, Dan fell into idolatry. Consequently, just as Moses prophesied in Deuteronomy 29 verse 21, was blotted out as a tribe. But when Jesus comes back and establishes his kingdom in Israel, guess who is the first tribe given their allotment? The tribe of Dan. Such Bible students are the incredible grace, mercy, and forgiveness of God. Number five. Some Bible students believe that 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 11 to 14 teaches that people who willfully reject the gospel during this age of grace cannot be saved after the church is removed or raptured from the earth. They argue that people would not believe the truth, but instead will believe a lie. Those left behind heard the word and understood it, yet willfully refused it. However, a multitude of Gentiles will believe the gospel after the church is gone, and they will be willing to lay down their lives for Jesus. Yes, people will be saved during the tribulation, but they will pay a severe price. How much wiser it is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior today. I want to conclude Revelation part 15 with this thought. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to set you free and to give you hope for your future. He will forgive your sins, hand them over to Him. Now is the time to make a decision to follow and to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have questions or would like someone to pray with you, we would be happy to speak with you. Please give us a call at 082-828-2085. We are so excited for your new life in Christ. I will continue this Bible study teaching on the book of Revelation next time, so be sure to join us again.